Something hit the house! What the hell was that? Oh God, what was that? I don't know. I don't know. I love a good premise. Horror movies are filled with great premises. And I think, I think even more so than any other genre, the horror movie world is sold by its premise. But the biggest trick, of course, is can you actually pay off that premise in a way that's satisfying and complete? We Need to Do Something is a 2021 horror movie about a family that shelters inside of their bathroom during a storm and then gets trapped there and slowly realizes that the storm is something more devious than they originally thought. Uh, I think, anyway, this might be a, a relatively short review because there really isn't much to kind of discuss here. Like, the, the irony of all ironies, and, and this is probably on purpose, is the title of the movie is the exact opposite of what is in the actual movie. I mean, nobody really does anything. Uh, usually, I would kind of go into a more in-depth breakdown of sort of the story plot here, but, you know, there really isn't one. I mean... The family is stuck in the bathroom after a tree falls on their house and kind of locks them in. And then it becomes kind of this stage play of a family that is uh, trapped inside of a bathroom. And I think the overall issue is that it feels a bit too disjointed in both thinking and execution. So the, the, the movie begins with uh, them kind of going into the bathroom in order to wait out a storm that is going overhead. They fear it might be a tornado, but they're not totally sure. Now, first of all, is this even a thing? Now, most of the time, bathrooms are, are inside of houses are, are the smallest rooms in the house, and I've never heard of them being the safest. I mean, I'm not exactly the, the best person to know, but I've heard of getting under tables, and I've heard of getting inside of doorways because they're structurally more sound and can protect you if, if anything's falling debris. But the bathroom just seems to me just another small room. So right out of the gate, I'm a little confused. And then the whole family kind of just seems on edge where like everyone's emotions right out of the gate is dialed up to like 11. We do kind of find out later that the parents were in the middle of an argument when this whole thing kind of came about and it's hinted that the mother was having an affair, um, but that never really gets resolved or pays off and that the dad is some kind of an alcoholic. Uh, also that Melissa, the daughter, seemingly has more to do with what's happening around them than she originally has led on. This sets up a situation where through their conversation, we learn a bit more about them and the tensions between them for one reason or another. However, the only time that the actual narrative moves forward is through a series of flashbacks of Melissa and her relationship with her girlfriend, Amy, who is apparently some kind of a witch. Now, these flashbacks are few and far between, so you end up having large portions of the movie set in the present, stuck in place, both literally and narratively. That results in the movie becoming this sort of epitome of telling versus showing. Now, not only do we get the family dysfunction in the present situation of people in rooms kind of talking or yelling, the rare flashbacks that do drive the information forward are largely expository. It's usually Amy telling what has happened or about to happen, as opposed to them doing a thing and us seeing the results of it. So by the time that we get to say two thirds into the movie, I just wanted to kind of stay in the flashbacks because that was actually telling a story. However, even the flashbacks themselves sort of hold back information so that you never really know what is happening. Like, it's all rather vague talk of spells and dark entities and demons, and none of it is fully kind of fleshed out. Back in the present, they just seem to sort of react to the weirdnesses that are happening around them. But nothing is ever actually planned or done. Like, the whole movie has this very surreal quality to it. Like, it's like it's part of some sort of fever dream or something. Like at one point, they're attacked by something that's just outside the door that they thought was a dog. And then Melissa, the daughter, ends up ripping out its tongue. And so although the tongue is just in the sink and still flopping around, they immediately decide that they need to eat it. Everything just kind of feels like bizarro world in this movie. My problem with this type of a story is 
If you have everyone trapped in one location and the entire movie is the dialogue or the conversation that happens between all the different family members, then I feel like the story or the heart of the story should revolve around the discovery of what those characters are talking about. But instead with this, what the story is really about are the things that are happening outside of this bathroom and how that happened and what is happening. And so the entire time you're just left wondering, well, what's happening outside that door? That's what I want to know. I don't really care about the inner workings of this family's dysfunction. I want to know what's happening out there. And so you're constantly thinking about what's beyond the door and less about, hey, I want to find out why the dad's an alcoholic. To be clear, it's not a bad movie, and it does have good performances and great blood and special effects work. And to make a movie being stuck in a bathroom as compelling as they did, I guess is a win. But it did sort of wear on me after a while. Like, like I know this is based on a book, and I could see this working much better in the book than on screen, just because of so much information is sort of left out. I just think the script could have used maybe another pass in fleshing out the characters and having their actions tie into the story itself more, while also maybe doling out the information throughout the course of the movie more consistently. As it stands, it feels a little starved for story and forward momentum, and the whole thing just came off as feeling a little too open-ended. I mean, we never really find out what all of this was actually for. I'd give this movie a C+. Let me know what you think.